A lot of the times in my job, I find myself having to build systems diagrams. Now, these are diagrams that describe how systems connect and talk to each other. For example, an integration between a recruiting system and an HR system needs to be understood, and we have to know what data gets passed and how in order to diagnose challenges, figure out what features we want to build out, and a lot of other stuff. Historically, I've used tools like Draw.io or Lucidchart to do this, or even a physical whiteboard. And then I've put those into confluence with the other documentation I have about the system, the owner, projects, etc. This raised some challenges because I then have to go to another system to go update it, find some way to integrate it and pull it over. And it also made it hard to update it. If someone else wanted to come in, they needed access to that source file. And that could mean getting them a license to that system and costing more money or training them on how to use it. Recently, I've shifted to using Confluence whiteboards, and I found a number of great positives about that. The biggest one is the data stays in Confluence. I can put the whiteboard in the content tree directly next to or within other information about my systems, so folks don't have to go searching for it. It keeps all the context in one spot, making it much easier to find things. Also, because it's in Confluence, most folks I work with already have a license and kind of know how to use the system. So if updates are needed or there's questions, they can go in and just do the update. And last, it integrates directly with Confluence and Jira. So if there's a challenge with the system, we can raise a ticket from the diagram. And we can also incorporate documentation about the system directly in the diagram itself. This helps reduce some of the distance and friction folks have trying to find information or get help. And has been a big plus for me. So let's jump into Confluence. We're gonna use Confluence Cloud, and I'll show you how I build out a diagram. We'll use the example of an HR system, but this could be anything, sales, engineering, any systems you work with. Let's see how it looks. And here we are in a Confluence instance. Again, this is cloud. I'm not running any add-ons or anything. The only thing I might have done is added whiteboards. So if I go to create, I have an option for whiteboard, or if I go down to my content tree and hit the plus sign, either on a parent page or at the top, I'll have that same option for whiteboard. So if this is missing, it's possible you have to talk to your Confluence admin to help get that turned on. Again, one of the things I really like about Confluence whiteboards is they appear directly in my content tree. They're gonna show up on the left here just like any other page. This makes it really easy to put them in context with other pieces of information, just like you would any other page. In this example, I'll create one under this Confluence plus Jira page and just click on whiteboard. I'm going to collapse the sidebar. And I do have some templates I could use. For this example, I'm going to skip past this, but I'll encourage you to take a look at these. They can help you get a good idea for starting points. The first thing I'm going to do is give this a name. I'm constantly forgetting to name pages, so I'm just going to call this HR Systems Map. Because for this example, we're going to build out an example Human Resource Systems Map. Now in my toolbar along the bottom, I have some options for shapes. Sticky notes are more for, in my mind, collaborating or adding information. I can add text, which I'm going to use when I add a key. That's gonna tell other people what the shapes mean or why I choose certain colors. Next, I have the shapes. Now, whenever I build a diagram or a process map or a system map, I want to make sure I clearly define what each shape means. For example, a rectangle might mean a module within a system, whereas a diamond is an API endpoint and a right parallelogram is a database. This makes it easier to visually display what the part of the system is, so when folks look at it, they get more information. I'll encourage you to think through what your shapes will mean and how you will standardize those with your team, just so they know what's what. Personally, I like to use something called sections to indicate a system and shapes to be parts within the system. And I'll show you that difference in just a minute. Next, we have our lines, and these are essentially the connections between things that will show our integrations. We can have just a line or a nice bendy line. I'd like to use the straight ones. It's just a visual preference I have. So to indicate my first system, I'm gonna use a section. And I'm just gonna give it a name, and we'll pretend this is a recruiting system. And then I'll repeat this for each other system in my diagram. So for this example, I'll also have a human resource information system or HRIS. And then I'll also have a compensation system. Again, your environment may be more or less complex. 
but I like to use these sections because I can connect the sections to show how the systems connect, and then they visually show within them the modules of that system. From here, I'll start just by showing the high-level connections. So for example, the recruiting system talks to my HRIS. I'll make a arrow showing which direction the information flows from the left to the right. I could, if I wanted, make it a double directional arrow. I find these can be visually confusing because it's hard to tell what's going where. So you'll see me doing two separate arrows, one in each direction. Here, I'll click Add Text, and this puts a text box right on that connection. And this one, I'll just say New Hire Data. Now, this might not be enough. Someone might look at that and go, what specific new hire data? In something like Lucidchart, I'd have some options I could link out somewhere else. I could list it all there. But because this is within Confluence, I can add a link. And this lets me link to any Confluence page, any Jira ticket, or anything in Atlas. So for this example, we'll pretend this is our new hire data document that my engineering team has built. And I can put that right in the document. I could even if I wanted to, and I do this frequently when I have the document available, have the link between the systems go through that page. So here it would show someone clearly, oh, this integration touches new hire data, and they can click on this to go see what that information is. Again, the goal here is to reduce the distance between someone's question or need and their ability to get what they want. Continuing my diagram, I know my HR system also talks to my recruiting system. So I'll draw an arrow, and to make this a little bit visually easier, I'll make sure the arrows are separated. Here, I'll add some text, and our HR system is going to give the recruiting system something like our departments. And then I'm going to repeat this process with each system. So by the end of it, I'll have a good idea at a high level how all these things connect. So here we have a more completed diagram. I can see my compensation system talks to recruiting and it gives it pay ranges, something that my recruiting team has told me is necessary. And here I have my human resource system passing employee data to the compensation system and getting pay ranges back. So here very quickly, I've built out a fairly usable diagram that would help someone new to the team understand what's going on with our systems. Of course, this will likely be bigger in most production environments. There might be specific naming conventions for these integrations. So for example, they might have different names than just what's being passed. But you can, of course, always link out to documentation to help folks understand what's going on. Now, I briefly mentioned earlier building a key to describe what everything is. I like to do that as I go so I don't forget anything. So now that I'm done with my high level, I'm just going to add a text box. And I'll zoom in a bit so we can see it. It's just called key. And then I'm going to list out what the shapes mean. So a section is a system. And lines are integrations. To continue this example, I'm going to dig into the HRIS, my human resource system. I know from talking to my experts that there are modules within it that we have to consider. So I'm going to represent those with shapes. And I'm going to use the rectangle to represent a module of a system. I'll just build out the HRIS in this example, but each system would have a list of modules or other features you want to take a look at. So I'll quickly build it out for HRIS and then explain how I did it. So here I have within my HRIS a few modules that I know exist. There's one for onboarding, offboarding, employee data, and an API or interface for employee data that other systems could use. And I've used the diamond to show that it is visually different than my modules. Now if I have more information, I could even connect these modules within the system. For example, if I know that the employee data module ties into both onboarding and offboarding, as well as that API, I can add arrows to indicate how data flows within the HRIS. This is a great way to show my team how data moves and it can help them troubleshoot challenges. For example, if we are unable to onboard someone, we probably don't have to go to the onboarding module first because it gets its data from the employee data module within the HRIS. Similarly, if there's a problem with the employee data API, I know I should go look at the employee data section of the system and then ask more questions from there. Now, because I've added additional shapes, I'm going to go back to my key and I'm just going to indicate what those shapes mean. And if I zoom out a bit, you can see there's starting to become a lot more detail. I would repeat this process with every part of my system. 
And then I would have a systems map that I could share with others by using this link and sending it to them. They can come edit it in real time with me. And they could also come in and provide feedback. For example, adding stamps if they find a problem, a fire. <laughs> or because this is integrated with Jira, they could even select a module and create a Jira issue right from here. This is a great way for folks to flag challenges. This will replace the onboarding icon with a Jira ticket link that I can then directly go to to see what's going on with that section of the system. So this is another great way to reduce the distance many people have between finding a challenge and getting the help they need. So that is how I have been using Confluence whiteboards to build system diagrams. Again, it lives in Confluence like any other page or piece of content, making it very easy to share. I don't have to worry about licensing and others can just go update it as they find updates. I'm really curious to see how you've been using Confluence whiteboards, whether it's for system diagramming or something else. So drop a comment down below. And if you like this video, drop me a like and subscribe and let me know what other topics in Confluence or systems you would like to explore together. Thank you very much for sticking around for this video and I'm looking forward to seeing you in another one of these soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.